Hey everybody, CVH here, and it's time for another Budget of Five video. This is going to be number 10, and the last class that we haven't already done a Budget of Five video for. Don't worry, I'll be doing more in the future, just going back around and uh, looking at some decks I've already done, maybe with some of the new cards that have been released in Heroes of Skyrim, uh, and more Budget of Five decks of different types in the future. But today, we are going to be looking at none other than Midrange Monk. Now, if you have no idea what we're doing in this series, if you haven't seen one of these before on the channel, what we do is take out all the epics and all the legendary cards in a list that's established and maybe posted somewhere or someone's had success with that you might see on the ladder and replace them with commons and rares to make the deck easier to make, uh, easier to acquire with soul gems without spending a whole lot of money on the game to make it easier for budget players, uh, those just starting the game, building their collection, and also to allow us to think a little bit about replacements and what we're looking for in a card and how we can keep the core of the deck intact and then test it out a bit and ca in casual and see if we can take some games. And the list we're doing that with today is Renegade Seraph X's Midrange Monk from Legends-Dex.com. Uh, he posted this list, said he had a pretty good win weight with it, and the one thing that I did change, I took the liberty of already cutting the three copies of Praetorian Commander because the, when he posted this list, uh, this had yet to have been nerfed. If you guys don't know this, used to give all creatures in your deck plus two, plus two. And it took a significant hit uh, after that nerf to the point where I don't really want to play it in this list and I'm pretty sure you guys won't either so I've already replaced them with three copies of Golden Saint which is a rare uh, and fits the criteria for the budgetified decks. We're also going to be cutting all the cards as we usually have from the Fall of the Dark Brotherhood and Madhouse collection expansions. Uh, we're going to keep the core set in Heroes of Skyrim because you can make those cards even without having to spend any money or gold but Madhouse and Fall of the Dark Brotherhood while they occasionally have some really good cards in certain decks that we're budgetifying uh, since you have to spend some gold or money to acquire them in the first place we're not going to be including them for these videos but I strongly recommend picking them up so on to the rest of the deck we have a pretty standard mid-range shell here he's just going to be getting aggressive uh, you know playing on curve we've budgetified a lot of these mid-range decks because they're not the hardest to understand conceptually and they're not super hard to get your hands on a good uh, selection of cards for these kind of strategies it's being aggressive not necessarily as fast as an aggro deck uh, but something that has uh, basically good drops at all stages of the game leading to killing your opponent before they start doing crazy control things ideally so the first couple cards we have to cut uh, that our legendaries are Ungolem and Tazcad, the two unique legendaries in this list. Now these are very unique effects uh, that are hard to just replace one for one, so I'll be leaving the space empty and uh, coming back to fill that space at the end. It's also worth noting that Anasi is not in this original list, and you will probably see Anasi in more monk decks than not included. Not exactly sure why it wasn't in the original list here, but don't expect, uh, or if you want to play this kind of deck, uh, Expect that you might want to pick up an Anasi. It's definitely not a bad card for this style of deck. Moving on, the selection of two drops. All definitely affordable here, so we can keep playing all of those. Brotherhood Slayer, unfortunately, does have to be cut, as it is from the Fall of the Dark Brotherhood expansion. Like I mentioned, definitely something you want to pick up. We've taken Brotherhood Slayer out of a few decks in the Budget of Fire series so far. And uh, the common replacement we've been doing is Black Sap Protector. A 3 cost, 3-3 three, three as well. Also a Prophecy, keeping that Prophecy count high, uh, and a Guard. So this will help you against aggressive decks, and which are very popular in the lower end of the ladder. So if you're just getting your feet wet in the ladder, this card's likely to have a lot of value uh, against those really super aggro decks in defending your, your two-drop plays. Sometimes your Cut Purse, sometimes your Goblin Skulks, and being a surprise Prophecy, of course. East March is fine, Giant Bat is fine. Uh, worth noting, you don't need to play this card if you're if you're kind of questioning it. Uh, I think a lot of the reason he was playing it in the first place was the Praetorian Commanders, because, you know, giving them plus two, plus two, and then drawing a three-cost, four-four charge drain is pretty insane. I will be keeping it in for this video, because it's already there. Why not? Let's play with it and see if it can be good. Uh, but you don't, if you're looking for something to cut for other cards you have, maybe Giant Bat shouldn't really be in here if you're not playing the Praetorian Commanders, because they're nerfed. He's Guild Shadowfoot. Uh, it's from Heroes of Skyrim. We can keep that in there. Some nice card draw there, allowing us to bypass some runes, uh, essentially, so they don't get their prophecies. Now, Moonlight Whereabout does have to be cut. Uh, really solid card when you're racing your opponent, dealing the damage and gaining the life so other aggressive decks can't really beat you unless they uh, spend resources on it. But there's another 4-drop that helps you a lot in those situations that wasn't included in the original list, and that's Hive Defender. So we'll definitely be jamming three of those, one of the best stat lines on any 4-drop in the game, and just a really, really powerful option, not only for protecting your other guys, but also getting aggressive because the body is really not that easy to kill. Sightless Skulk, decent car draw, we're keeping it. Cliff Racer, one of the best charge creatures in the game, we get to keep that as well. But we do have to cut not only the Leaf Lurkers, but also the Pillaging Tribunes. Tribune, another one of those cards that really helps you race, uh, and Leaf Lurker, just really solid removal. 
Nothing really does what Leaf Lurker does, as in removal and a body. We could use Finish Off for that reason if we just wanted the removal. But there is basically the, uh, the pinnacle of all removal in the game that we can simply play. It doesn't have the body attached to it, but uh, Piercing Javelin is just going to kill whatever we need it to. And it's an additional prophecy for the deck, so we might as well include those. Definitely a reasonable card to include even in the fully constructed builds of Monk decks. Pillaging Tribune, however... Uh, would be even nicer to have since we have the Golden Saints now because they will probably assure that we can uh, ensure that we can get the the Golden Saint going right after we get the Tribune going. However, we can't play it. But there is a wonderful new card from Heroes of Skyrim that we'll be including in its place, and that's Sheer Point Dragon. Uh, we won't have the Leaf Lurkers that we just took out to take advantage of the curse effects, but Sheer Point Dragon is a really good tempo option, a really good tempo play when you play just to kill like one of those Windkeep spell swords, your Daggerfall mages, or help you trade more favorably, and it can give the curses a little bit more viability later in the game. Uh, if they're looking kind of weak, all of a sudden curse can basically kill anything with two power and two health. That's totally reasonable with Sheer Point Dragon. Uh, so definitely a really powerful card. Uh, which you see a lot outside of dragon decks as well. So now we have to replace, finally, the Ungolem and the Tazcad. Just get that space in there so we can add 50 cards. Uh, and I'm going to take it old school with this pick. Uh, there's a lot of things we could play in the spot. I'm half tempted to play this Night Prowler as a 2 of just to get some more card draw. But I'm going to go with the old Soul Rest Marshals just as a 2 of. Uh, this is a fine card to really dominate the board, much like Golden Saint. And if we can play them in conjunction, if we can go Soul Rest into Golden Saint, and then the Golden Saint spawns another one, that can sort of be how we lock up the game. We don't have Tazcad to do that for us, but Soul Rest Marshal, and we have even more 6 cost cards now, so we can get more value than we would have been able to before, getting a 12 Magicka total value if we can get that Soul Rest Marshal while being ahead on life, which I still think we'll be able to be doing more often than not, even without the, uh, the Pillaging Tribunes, because we now have the Hive Defenders to help us defend, the Black Sap Protectors do the same thing. Uh, Piercing Javelin, another strong prophecy to give us a total of 12. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, let's take it to casual and uh, see if we can't win some games. And as always, if you've enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, stay subscribed to the channel for more Legends content, and follow my stream in the description. And I'll see you guys next time. Spider's Guild's a fine keep. I think I'd really like to find a Cut Purse or Goblin Skulk, though, so I'm actually considering shipping it. Uh, but I'll just keep it to be safe. We could keep the, the Shadowfoot, too. I'd really like to find one of those other twos, though. I'm gonna ship it, but I think keeping it would also be fine. Shadowfoot at its best when we're about to destroy a rune, which we'd need an aggressive two drop to do quickly. Then we can steal the top card, give him a trinket, then the trinket will always be the card they draw with the rune destruction. Thieves Guild makes a lot more sense to start with than Fighters Guilds. So we have nothing to contest yet, and we'd like to draw some more cards. No play, seems good. Let's go ahead and smack for one, and I think ring out the Black Sap this time. Get some power there, next turn we could uh, attack some more, play East March Crusader. Let's heat things up. We could trade with that, or we could just attack, attack, and play East March. I'd like to save this for when we like go in for lethal or something. And this puts more power on the board, so I think I'm gonna do it. Teach you to mess with me. My scales move in shadow. We'll hold, no matter what. We do have the Soul Rest Marshal Golden Saint Dream. Will it close the game like we hoped it would do when we put the combo into our deck? I'll kill you where you stand. My arrows shall fly true. It's killing some things, but can he beat the sh uh, the Earth uh, Earth the East March Crusader? Forgot the name of the card for a second. Swindler's Market, huh? We are that kind of archer deck. Well, a turn after this is simply going to be Soul Rest Golden Saint with the ring. Take a draw with the uh, the Shadow Shift, or we could just play Double Fighters Guild and contest each lane with it. I like that, I think. I'm pretty sure we're always going to be ahead on life. The Solar Rest Golden Saint next turn, and that might just be too much pressure to deal with, but this kind of, is kind of a weak turn against the current board state. If he's Swindley's Market, he's probably got some Curses, Nord Firebrands, Smuggler's Hall, a lot of pings like the, uh, the Sharpshooter Scout and the Skaven that we've seen. These Fighters Guilds probably aren't going to do too much, but they're just going to waste his time until next turn. 
Over here. This way. Can't kill the other one. Alright, let's do it. Chaos take you. I bring reinforcements. Now that's really hard to beat for any deck. That's all there is to it. That's 12 12 of stats on turn 5. Mora tests us. Hilariously enough, the, uh, the counterfeit trinket that we're going to be giving him. Zero cost action, so it does work with the Swindler's Market. He's not going to actually lose any life overall. Take the damage from the Trinket and gain a life from the Swindler's Market while dealing a damage to me. Still thinking the Shadowfoot and then probably the East March, the East March first, I suppose. He has to make sure Shadowfoot's what we want to do with the rest of our turn. We'll hold, no matter what. Yeah, I still think it probably is correct, so let's do it. So many purses, so little time. Chaos. Chaos take Got a prophecy on that one. My arrows shall fly true. He still needs to clear up a lot of this board if he wants to not die next turn. The clan captain's pretty good for him. Time to fight. So those were the raiding party Nords. Still looking okay so far. The forest is my cloak. Still barely okay. If he doesn't have any more zero cost cards. Come at me. Surprised he wouldn't take that trade first. They make it too easy. You know, that lane is a shadow lane too, so that could have gone left, I guess. Just didn't want him to be able to attack it with something like that. But it is also a shadow lane. <laughs> Thanks to the hidden trail over there. Interesting. Don't make me laugh. is having a good night. has had enough. I feel like he definitely could have stayed alive there. But not since I got the prophecy and I had the cliff race. Maybe he was saving the uh the Nord Firebrands for killing me next turn with some more close calls and he was worried about timing out, maybe. It's a weird duck to play against for sure. A lot of damage output. Got a scout this time, ever popular in ladder. We could just keep all this. We have a reasonable ring into two, ring into three, ring into four, but this isn't one of the more powerful threes against Scout, I don't think. And I'd rather get one of the, the attacking two drops. Yeah, that's a definitely a better way to start the game. Get some pressure going. Mournhole Trader would also be a fine option if you happen to own the card for this kind of deck. Especially because the curses can deal with the. The curses you'll be playing and searching with the Goblin Skulks can deal with the 2-1 from the trader pretty easily. And let's just go ahead and Thieves Guild and push a bit. Can't quite kill that yet. Can either contest it with the Hive Defender or go for Shadow Shift, but I think I just like the Hive, honestly.
I will protect the hist. I think I'll conserve the jav, push a bit, and then play just another hive defender here. I don't think he'll be able to ramp enough this turn to get it to be a 6-6. Six, six. He'll probably just attack over the 3-4, leave it open 4, ring into Sheer Point Dragon to take care of it, or just attacking with the 1-2. That's probably what's going to happen, because I'll just use the Sheer Point on the 3-5 now. Still have the jab for some random threat later. The forest is more close. Three. Not bad. Definitely not bad. I think I just want to draw a couple cards here, or a, at, least, at least a card. Cliff Racer for the pressure. I like it. I think it's better than a couple guards right here. I already have the jab to deal with the uh, Thorn Hiss Mage if that's his turn. Kill one of them. The forest is my strength and my courage. If I fall, the hist will rip. They make it too easy. Could have played them both in the right in hopes that both of these live, but then of course, this kind of gets stranded in the left. Don't have the magic to play a shadow shift and play both the two still. You must be cleansed. Hmm. The Leaf Lurker? How do you kill the 3 3 over the 4 3? Hmm. Well, Jav does seem good, but maybe I use the Shadow Shift as well. I think I might actually save the Shadow Shift. Like, drawing cards seems really good here, but I might need it if he plays another guard next turn to close the game. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna do that. Can't do much about Odavanger Red Brahmin here, but when can you really ever do much about those cards? By playing around Red Brahmin with the Shadow Shift, I'm not playing around any single guard. And maybe that's the direction this is gonna take. Maybe he gets back the Leaf Licker, yeah. The forest is more close. Well, if he does that, attack my 1-2. And leave the 3 3. Yep, play guard. The shadow shift does win the game against what appears to be a fully constructed Ram Scout deck in casual. We'll take those. Definitely will take those. Alright, that is some Budgetify mid range monk. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time.